Hello, Nathan. You're up next. Hey, Bart. How are you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, so I have a hand uh, from Poker House Dallas. Poker House Dallas. Poker House Dallas. I have never played at Poker House Dallas. Is that the place that is starting to get like some games to give a little bit of competition to TCH Dallas? I know TCH Dallas. Yeah, so all the games. I'm gonna play. I'm only playing between TCH and Poker House Dallas. Mm-hmm, They're mm-hmm. starting to get a good amount of tables, and this is actually a live stream hand that I, they're starting to slowly build up. Oh, they play. They do a live stream now at Poker House yes. Dallas. Oh, okay. They started doing it for like the past month or so, and I thought uh, I knew the guy running it, so oh, kind of okay. hot on. A couple couple times a week or something. Yep, they run tournaments and cash. Okay, so we'll They'll check that. One. We'll check that one out. I didn't even know. I mean, there's so many live streams going on now. So Poker House Dallas. I assume though, is the, these places are actually quite nice. I don't know which one was nicer, TCH Dallas or Poker House Dallas, in terms of a room. But uh, it depends what kind of action you like. They have they have something called a Dallas Strata, which gives the button the ultimate last action. And yeah, yeah. It starts uh, under gun. But so okay. I'm actually normally a one two player. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm working on taking my shot up to two five, and I thought this was a uh, good opportunity as I can see my opponent's whole cards and kind mm-hmm. of learn from it by playing this live stream. Yep, and so I've, this is my first time playing two five. And I've actually said this to us in in the podcast too that you know with the prolifer with the new widespread sort of ease of a lot of card rooms putting together poker live streams, there's a lot of them going around. If you ever have the opportunity to play on one, it's a great learning tool because you can look at all your hands after the fact. You can look at your opponents. You can talk about it. You have a you have a record, right? Um, yes. And then if you bring it to somebody that you want to help you he can see the opponent's hands as well so two five i assume it's a match right match a stack yes so mm-hmm. it started off as a 1500 uh max and later on went to match a stack okay mm-hmm. so i am 933 effective uh with the main villain okay this is a rare uh heads up pot i guess in texas <laughs> okay so this i'm in the hijack with uh ace of clubs 10 of diamonds and i raised to 20 dollars. all right so hero in uh, in the hijack with ace of clubs, 10 of diamonds. Is that what you said? Yes. To 20. Okay. So folded you, make it 20. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the cutoff uh, calls. Okay. So a little background on the cutoff. This is still, I guess, early on the live stream, but I've noticed he was one of the higher B pip like players. He was very active. Uh, he was kind of sun running also, but that kind of won't go but so long. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we go heads up to the flop. The flop is the ace of spades, king of hearts, ten of spades. So ace, ace of spades, king of hearts, ten of spades for top and bottom. Yes. With ace ten, which is an interesting one because you know that when you're playing in loose games and you're playing against guys with VPIP like into the, say, 30s, a good chunk of their the hands that they will play preflop that they're sort of not supposed to play – consists of a lot of sort of Broadway cards, like offsuit Broadway cards, like calling with Queen Jack, you know, something like that. Now, they could have King-10, though, too, which you beat, and you would think Ace, right away, I'm thinking off the top of my head, well, Ace-King's going to 3-bet, so it's better here for you to have Ace-10 than it is, obviously, for, for you to have, like, King-10. Um, there's obviously two spades out there, too, you know, for flush draws and things like that, but this will be interesting. Looks like it'll cost about 45 bucks, right? Something like that? Uh, Yeah, I have 47, but... Okay, yep. yep. Um... So basically, I have a range advantage here, and I pretty much want to bet pretty frequently. And I should kind of use a smaller sizing, so I kind of bet uh, fifteen dollars. Okay. And our opponent raises to seventy-five. So raises to seventy-five. Now, in terms, seems crazy. Go ahead. Well, what I was going to say is, in terms of what you had said before about like a. A range and a nut advantage. I mean, I would tend to agree with you, especially if he three bets off aces, kings, and ace king, right? And uh, you probably both have queen jack. Maybe you have all the queen jacks, and he, you know, and he's not supposed to. I mean, if you're opening every queen jack off and he's not supposed to call with them, then you have a fairly large range and nut advantage. The only thing I would say about the small sizing here, as opposed to because I would tend to size up here, is that. Okay. It doesn't, you don't really appear, it wouldn't appear to me like you're going to get action from all the whiffs. Like, say he, the way that he calls hands is like he's got pairs, small pairs, you know, maybe small suited-ish types of hands, like suited connectors. And then, you know, so a, big, a good clump of these Broadway hands, like 
all those those first two categories of hands, like they're just going to fold anyways. So okay. if you just go like to say 30 or 40, I still think you get the same volume of calls from the hands that have hit this board. It's, you know, maybe the, occasionally like maybe 9, 10 with a backdoor peels for 15 where it might not peel for like 30 or 40. But I think you see where I'm going to. But you choose to go 15 and now he goes to 75. Well, now I think, you know, especially well it's not that you guys are super deep but it seems like this is a this is a call down here quite a bit and yes. possibly seeing what happens and possibly folding later on so cutoff goes to 75 hero calls right yeah this is a square call so the turn is a uh, nine of hearts and i have 197 in the pot i guess mm -hmm. and i check and flow and he bets 175 you said 10 of hearts is that right nine of hearts nine, nine of hearts. hearts i'm sorry so nine of hearts you check and he bets, he bets 175. So here it checks and cut off bets 175. So the first thing that I always do in these particular spots is I look at, I, I try to do some math ahead of time. And I'll be like, all right, well, if I call here, we're putting 350 here on the turn. The pot here is going to be probably just a hair under like 550. And, you know, we're still going to have. 700 or so left right so this is not like a raise or fold like get it in or fold type of scenario right you do have yes. stacked up here yeah i mean I, I think you call again for sure i mean looking at this you've got a double you know you get a front door flush draw back door spade draw if the river if you call again and the river is a brick you know the the video that we put up today on december 26 had to do with the cool crush live poker fifth street chicken type of thing you have shown so much strength by going call, call that I think if the river is like an offsuit deuce and he jams and he makes like a big bet, you have shown that you certainly have something. The mere fact that you have bet and called his raise and also called the large bet size on the turn should decrease his bluffing frequency. I'm not saying that I'm going to whether or not I'm going to call or fold, but we have to remember that the fact that you've done that should decrease his bluffing frequency. And of course, if you are behind right now, you have some equity to improve, right? Because you can boat up. Yes. Okay. So yeah. I assume you called? I call again. I okay. don't think there's any merit here for raising. No, um, I agree. 350, so, so the river is an interesting one. Um, it completes some draws, but it bricks others. The river is a six of hearts. Okay, so the back door heart comes in. So it's ace, king, ten, front door spades, where it's the ace of spades, king of hearts, ten of spades, turns the nine of hearts. And now the river here is the six of hearts. But before you say anything, though, too, I will also note that because of your small sizing on the flop, you might see some more reflection of a guy raising you, whereas, because you bet 15 into 45 with some hints that you wouldn't necessarily think that he would raise you with, Whereas if you had sort of bet larger, then there are less hands that he would raise you with. So, you know, is there ever, you know, are there slivers of ace X of hearts here that like run mm -hmm. into the nut flush because of your small sizing on the flop? Maybe, maybe, but it's not the cleanest river, right? It's not the cleanest yeah. river, right? Okay. So I assume you check. Uh, yes. Is there any merit for block betting here? Well, <sighs> merit for block betting. I mean, I think... You probably would want to have the Ace of Hearts here to block, I think. Okay. Um, because then you can't really get raised, really ever. Yes. Right? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So I, don't, I, I think I would more be apt to – your opponents played this so aggressively that I'd be more apt to just sort of check and – and see what he does. And to be honest okay. with you, I gotta be like, if he has King 10 here, especially with the backdoor heart coming in, mm -hmm. there's a very good chance. He's just going to check behind. So it'll be interesting to see when he bets, um, you know, what he does. So, or like what you, how much he bets for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I check here, but, uh, as probably a lot of people expect, uh, he jams here for six thirty three and six sixty three effective. So hero checks, and 633? 663. 663. By the way, is this hand on the live stream? Yes. I believe I submitted the link to the live stream. Okay. Well, I'll try to put it in there. Um, uh, well, it, when, when was this show from? Do you remember? Uh, it was like uh, three weeks ago on a Friday. 
So like maybe December 10th or a Friday, what was it, the 25th, 24th. So maybe the 9th, December 9th or something like that. Friday, That's December 9th. Yeah. Um, so looking at an over pot size bet here, backdoor hearts have come in. I might live to see another day here again. I'm not looking at the live chat yet in the sense that traditionally these boards are a little bit under bluffed because, you know, it hits you more than it hits them. The bluffs, I guess, might be somebody who's just like sort of maniacal, who's hopping up on your small sizing and doing it with like some sort of spading, like spade draw, like a four or five of spades or something like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm not pleased at all here by the jam. And I'm not pleased by the fact that hearts um, come in here too. And if it's the type of dude that's going to call uh, with Queen Jack, I mean, I know obviously, right, that you're supposed to call down with some strong hands, but I might be able to get on, I really might be able to get on board here with the fold, although it is Texas. And uh, I don't think anyone's going to fault you for calling here too. I feel like I have the best ace 10 combo since I unblock. Well, I guess I probably better prefer to have a heart, but I don't have any spade in my ace 10. But I was also wondering, is there a difference between two pair here and a set? Like ace 10 versus aces? Is there much of a difference here? Um, no, not, I mean, in terms of what the guy's representing, probably not at this point. I mean, the only thing that I'll say though, I, I think that there, if you think he three bets ace king all the time, then there probably isn't that much of a difference. Now, okay. with that being said, we've had some calls where people have played ace king slow, like through limb calling or flat yes. calling pre and, you know, yeah, like I could see you maybe losing to ace king here. Maybe, maybe, you know, I don't know if the guy thinks he's going to go all that thin. So I would rather have a set here to just in to beat some people okay. that might go super thin with those types of, you know, that because you lose to, you know, because you lose to Ace King. But, ah, man, it's just like, yeah, this board. Now you did bet small, but this board. And, and then you have to start to think about like, well, you know, is, what, is he raising, you know, what are the other bluffs? Like what, like. Jack 10, Queen 10, are those continuing on? Are those just going to continue on for calls more so than raises? Because if you just yeah. miss the flop, then you're just going to be done with it. Like, there doesn't need to be a whole lot of Jack 10, Queen 10 raises from your opponent's perspective, I don't think, in position versus your small sizing in the setup. So I kind of want to fold, but it, it would take a a fairly special player, although there are some in Texas where I, I very well might call down, but I kind of want to fold here on paper. Yep. Uh, in hindsight, that's probably what I should have did, but uh, I was in the tank, and I actually called out his hand and everything, uh, but I, I ended up calling, putting the call, and he showed me the bad news with uh, Queen Jack, the Queen of Clubs, Jack of Spades. So so the offsuit Queen Jack combo. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's just one of those ones. I mean, what's interesting is, is that, you know, you say, would I rather have a set? I mean, at this point, you might even rather block some hands here that block queen jack like maybe you would rather have ace queen here than um ace 10 right if he's not going to value town with king 10 and uh you don't think he's going to value town with ace 10 you, you know you might rather have ace queen just to block some of the these queen jack combos you know yep yep all right nathan appreciate thank it thank you so much Bert.